Well, hello and welcome. I'm Miss Heard with Miss Heard Song Lyrics Podcast. We're at Season 6, Episode 272. And the Miss Heard Song Lyric is, Everybody wants Kung Fu fighting. Those kicks were fast at lightning. And the correct lyrics is, Everybody wants Kung Fu fighting. Those cats were fast as lightning. I don't know how many that are listening to this thought I, for years, thought he was thinking about thinking about kicks or fast as light, not cats. Which now I understand that's the real lyric, amazingly. And you know, in the seventies, people said, "Hey, cats, cool cats." And also, in the early twenty twenties, we heard that vernacular back from. Carol Baskin with the whole Tiger King thing. But back in the 70s, cool cats. Cats was used as a slang term for, you know, cool people. So it's not kicks were fast as lightning, it's cats. So we're talking about who? Carl Douglas's Kung Fu Fighting. So let's just dig in. Kung Fu Fighting is surprisingly, not surprisingly, a disco song by Jamaican vocalist Carl Douglas. It was written by him and produced by British Indian musician. Go into that in a bit. But let's talk about Carl Douglas. I did not know he was from Kingston, Jamaica, which is awesome. And then later lived in California before relocating to London as a teenager. He spent his childhood in England playing football, which is soccer for us in the United States, and vocal training. In his youth, he developed a passion for soul singing, citing that Sam Cooke and Otis Redding as his biggest influences, which I can hear in his voice. And he is a trained tenor. And... It was said, or it's been said many times on the interweb, that he would display his church singing at various religious songs. So that's where he kind of got his vocal training beginning. So his career was based in the UK, because like I said, he he moved as a teenager, finally to London. And his disco single, Kung Fu Fighting, was produced by a British Indian songwriter, composer, and producer named Bidu. And Bidu, I believe, is the first name and his last name is Apaya. It was ranked number one on both the UK Singles Chart and the US Billboard Hot 100 in 1974. So yours truly was a mere two years old. So didn't know it yet, but I would find out later. This is an awesome song. So in many things I look through, I found on songfacts.com a little more info on Kung Fu Fighting. So quote unquote, it says, Kung Fu Fighting seems like a glaringly obvious hit. But it was banished to the B-side when Douglas recorded it with Asian producer Bidu, last name Apaya, and set it, sent it to Pi Records, so it's P-Y-E Records, with a more generic song called I Want to Give You Everything on the A-side. So this is actually a B-side hit. Kung Fu Fighting was not meant to be a hit, Bidu told the Metro Northwest August in August of uh, 6 of 2004, so 20 years ago. Carl Douglas recorded something for an A-side of a single, and every session was three hours long. We spent two hours on the first song and then took a break. And I said, quick, guys, we need to record the B-side in two takes. Kung Fu Fighting was the B-side. So I went over the top on the huzz and huzz and the chopping sounds. It was a B-side. Who's going to listen? I played the A-side to the guy at Pi Records, Robin Blanchflower. And he said, can I listen to the rest of the reel? When he heard, heard it, he said, this should be on the A-side. So amazingly, it didn't take that long to make. It was crazy so- <laughs> Kung Fu sounds lightning in a bottle with kung fu fighting what how many of these songs uh, how many of this single sold what it sold 11 million copies worldwide and that's again back in the time in 1974 you had to walk run drive skateboard to a record store nothing was downloaded or stream making it one of the best-selling singles of all time then the single was later certified gold by the riaa on november 27 1974 so we're hitting about Gosh, end of this month, because it's November, about 50 years ago. This single obviously pays homage, or homo- homage? Homage. I'm going to say homage. It sounds very, very classy. To martial arts films, overshadowed, unfortunately, the rest of Douglas's career and has led to his appearance on other artist versions of the song. In the UK, or actually in the United States, Douglas is considered a one-hit wonder since he is commonly known only for kung fu fighting, although he did another song, a follow-up called Dance the Kung Fu, but it stalled at number 48. You know what? I said time and time again, I would like to be a one-hit wonder. That's all I want. Just one song. Christmas, preferably. Every year, we know it's going to be always playing. So I'm putting it out there uh, in the karaoke world and in the universe. 
In the UK, two of his other singles made it to the top 40. The Dance the Kung Fu, which peaked at number 35 in the charts, and Run Back, which peaked number 25. Douglas was once managed by an Eric Wolfson, who later became the primary songwriter behind the Alan Parsons Project. That's a big did you know. And then fast forward in 1998, there was a re-recording of Kung Fu Fighting performed by a British dance act called Bus Stop, and which featured Douglas's vocals peaked at number eight on the UK singles chart. And then the single Dance the Kung Fu was actually sampled by a Kudana Witty from the 2001 album Nibilandia by Polish group Ego, and later by DJ Premier on his 2007 remix of Nike's 25th Air Force One anniversary single, Classic Better Than I've Ever Been, featuring Kanye West, Nas, Keras One, and Rakim. More things about to know, I mean, more, more info about the song is it was released in 1974 as the first single from his debut album called Kung Fu Fighting and Other Great Love Songs in 1974. Now, this was Again, lightning in the bottle, perfect time, perfect place. It was on the cusp of the disco era and kung fu film craze. We had, you know, what movies did we have back then? Bruce Lee, Fist of Fury, that was 1972, great movie. Enter the Dragon, 1973. And then a popular TV series I, I watched as a child in reruns called Kung Fu, starring David Carradine, that ran from 1972 and 75. Now that, we'll talk about a little bit later, definitely cultural appropriation there. You had a white man playing an Asian man. Uh, the song again rose, like I said, to the top of the British, Australian, Canadian, and American charts, and also hitting a lot of the top of the soul singles charts. Another thing I found on soul, songfacts.com was Carl Douglas was working as a session singer for Pi Records, so more info on the backstory, quote unquote, in London when he wrote the song. He got the idea one night in Soho when he walked by a pinball arcade, pinball arcade, okay? and saw some kids using kung fu moves in a mock fight, moving in time to the music. He turned to his buddy and said, quote, damn, looks like everybody's kung fu fighting, end quote. At that moment, I heard it all in my head, melody the line as well, so I had to rush home and write it down, he explained to Billboard Book of Number One Hits. That's how it works. It's, you know, you don't expect it. it came out of nowhere, and the universe made sure he walked by that arcade and saw those kids doing it, and the rest is history. How did the song do? Again, it received a gold certification from the RIAA in 1974 and eventually went on to sell, like I said, 11 million records worldwide. And this, the song uses the Oriental Asian riff. And it's a, obviously this short musical phrase that is used to signify Chinese culture. So when I, you hear it, you know, ah, oh, okay, enter someone of Asian descent or something Asian. And so that's, of course, in the song. Kung Fu Fighting was rated number one, or actually rated number 100 in VH1's 100, 100 Greatest One Hit Wonders, and number one in the UK Channel's 4's Top 10 One Hit Wonders list in 2000. The same channel's 50 Greatest One Hit Wonders poll in 2006 and Bring Back the One Hit Wonders, for which Carl Douglas performed the song in a live concert. That would have been awesome to see. Another Did You Know is the song was covered by CeeLo Green, with Jack Black and the Vamps for the first and third films of Kung Fu Panda. Um, it's a franchise, if you haven't seen it already. It's, I think, on Netflix. I just saw it recently, or Amazon. And it is a cartoon, very cute. So this was also used. There's a music video, which was amazing, because not all the songs back in those days had music videos, because they were way before the MTV era. There is one. If you go on, I found it at least on YouTube, it was uploaded back on April 3rd, 2014, so 10 years ago already. It's already added 23 million, so 23.6 million views. And you see Carl wearing a red gi, or the top part, red banana and white pants. And he's, of course, doing kung fu moves. The interesting thing, and I'm just going to throw it out there because some of you are thinking what I'm thinking, and it's in my back, my, is with 2024's eyes, would this song and video be considered cultural appropriation with Carl Douglas? So I looked up, what does cultural appropriation with music, what does that mean, doing a Google search? And here's what I found. It says, cultural appropriation of music is when a person or group takes elements from another culture's music without acknowledging or respecting the culture's authenticity and value. It can be especially controversial when members of a dominant culture appropriate from a minority culture. And I think that's what we're seeing here. But, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know back then. 
Some examples of cultural appropriation in music include, for example, a white indie rock band performing the songs of a black R&B singer, the talking heads echoing African pop rhythms, the Wu-Tang Clan channeling the spirituality of Kung Fu cinema, Iggy Azalea using a black scent while rapping, Madonna borrowing from a variety of cultures, including black, gay, Indian, and Latin American cultures. Some of the questions to consider when evaluating cultural appropriation include, and this is what I found on the internet, it says, is the appropriating artist profiting off a marginalized culture? Does the appropriator understand the complexity of their relationship to the culture they're borrowing from? And will the appropriated music draw attention to its original source? All great questions. And again, we're dealing with something in 1974 and we're looking at it now 50 years later. So when you look at that lens, definitely cultural appropriation of that song. But it is what it is. We know better now, right? But it's one of those things I just want to throw it out there because, I again, I'm very neutral. Just want to hear what my listeners are thinking out there. You can always... Uh, reach out and I'll show you show well but again it's everybody was kung fu fighting those kicks are were fast as lightning not correct it's those cats if you have any great suggestions or you want to talk more about my question is it cultural appropriation in music you can send me a email at miss her that's m-i-s-s-h-e-a-r-d songs at gmail.com or we have facebook x formerly twitter or instagram and we'd love to hear from you Till then, keep singing those songs rock. Bye.